Some armor sets in God of War Ragnarok are very tricky to find thanks to hidden bosses that spawn in multiple areas and materials that can be hard to spot while they are needed to get that final piece of the amazing looking Fallen Stars armor set. There's also an armor with a very fun playstyle like I will tell you how to not miss them and also if they are any good on the max level. Spoiler alert, they kinda are. So no story spoilers of course in this video, only if you haven't completed the first main story in I'm yet, which like seven to eight hours into the game. Okay, it's still here. Then let's go. At one point in the game, you will reach the frozen lake of nine in Midgard, and here you can immediately choose to go to the main objective or do some optional content, which will also reward you with one of the coolest looking armor sets in the game. The Guiding Light. I think we can both agree that the shoulder plates and the really cool looking art on the chest look fantastic. I will tell you the locations for this in a moment, but first let's look at the perks. The gloves and waist are pretty interesting on paper. Melee attacks have a luck chance to critically strike, creating a damage explosion with an 8% base chance if you wear both items, which you can then increase based on your luck. Even on a low level, it totally appeared more than the 8% would suggest and you see it by the way thanks to a visual explosion effect and you hear it actually as well. <laughs> So when this triggers, it deals a bit more damage, and it is by the way a lower level Kratos, because after fully upgrading the armor, these explosions appear way more often, as every gear item has the luck stat, which is pretty wild. I was at 272 luck, without even spending too much effort in my enchantments to increase that even more. And I was overall pretty surprised by the amount of damage I did with this armor set, and the perk on the chest helps with that as well, as with this you have a moderate luck chance, that on any hit you increase the strength, runic and luck of one of Kratos' weapons. So it's basically roulette as the perk will randomly trigger when hitting enemies and then for 11 seconds one of your weapons gets a buff so it's really for if you like to switch between your weapons often. Like here I'm using the axe and then I trigger the buff for the blades so then I switch to the blades, pop the runic attack and get increased damage. A nice combination is also using the cursed empress handles for the blades which you get from that first Draugr hole you likely encountered right in the Bay of Bounty in Swarth it's over here on the map. This gives more strength and runic on blade hits, which can stack up to three times. But yeah, this means that you can have both this perk and that from the Guiding Light chest active at the same time if you're lucky. It's overall smart to use the blades because it has a higher chance of triggering the Guiding Light perks. And they can also trigger this perk from the handle. So it's really, really nice. I shred this traveler here and then get the buff for the X. So I switch it up and can easily take care of the enemy. I think it's a pretty fun and varied playstyle that really pushes you to try all the weapons instead of maybe sticking with your favorite. And again, you get this Guiding Light set in Midgard. If you find one piece, I found the first one over here on the map, they will immediately get a side mission that will tell you where to look for the other pieces. But to quickly help you out, the other one is near the blacksmith, which over here on the map. Maybe you got this as your first piece. You can also find one near the helmet from Tyr's statue, which is kind of hard to miss. It's over here. And of course, if you enjoyed the video so far, then totally leave a like. That would really help me out. And subscribe for way more God of War content like this. Now we want to head to that large optional area in Vanaheim, the crater, which you can go to after the second main mission in that realm pretty late into the game. Follow the side quest when you see the dock, it's called Ascent of Survival and then you will reach this area. Here you can only find both the other hidden armor sets. I want to start with the Hunter set that, yes, as the name suggests, increases the damage of all Kratos' ranged attacks and abilities by 20% when wearing both pieces. And with the chest, you can hold L2 for several seconds, which is 3, which then will give you a buff for all ranged attacks for 4.5 seconds. And what is nice is that if you keep holding L2, then after the buff is gone, it will appear immediately after 3 seconds again, and it is the case for every weapon. But yeah, the question of course is... How noticeable is the damage increase? Well, I was surprised. So this with the Raven Tears armor set and a fully charged Vengeful Sickle R1X attack. And now with this Hunter armor on the same enemy, I hold L2 to get the buff and deal twice as much damage. 
which you can especially see if we put the health bars next to each other. And here in one of the final challenges in Mutspolheim, the same skill instantly kills a target, which is pretty nice. I also really like the damage against this tougher raider. The heavy attacks from the X are pretty great as well, but of course a bit slower. You can of course also combine it with the whole triangle Frost Awaken skill and then throw the X. But I found that holding L2 and then just doing quick R1 throws is the best way to easily get rid of enemies. I'm kind of surprised how well this also works against a troll where you can very easily stagger with hits to the head. Like this fight was really, really easy now. Yes, I use the X a lot because the blades don't do a lot in combination with this playstyle. I totally want to dive deeper into this fun build though because I think it can be pretty strong. So stay tuned for that. So to get it, we need the Hunter's Brand crafting material, which again, you can get in the crater. So from the starting point, you want to head to the right. We want to take the rope down to enter the sinkholes. Now on your left hand side, you will find the first encounter with the untamed boss. So that would be over here on the map. She will disappear after taking some damage though. And there are multiple locations where you will have to fight her again. First though, you want to complete a side mission called Nocturnal Predator. Which you start over here at night. After burning the wisp with your blade, you will get the quest. Follow it. And then after taking out the boss from this quest, you will already get a Hunter's Brand. And then you immediately want to go to this point on the map close by. Because then the untamed will show herself again. After dealing enough damage, she will disappear again. And now we want to head over here on the map to the in plain sight side quest. Which is kind of close by. Completing this one will namely also give you a hunter's brand. Then from here we want to head into the jungle area at night. So that would be over here on the map. There is a path here. You want to follow that. And then at one point, if you just follow it, climb up and we'll get the return of the Riverside quest. If you complete that, the water in the area will start flowing again. And then when you can, like there are multiple ways to do that, you want to return to that mystic gateway you unlocked when entering the jungle, which is over here. And then you want to walk and drop down here again. And make sure, of course, that you nuke the poison plants. And now you will start the third encounter with the Untamed. Then you want to follow her trail after dealing enough damage. This will have you take the boat to the nearby shore. And then you want to go to her lair, which is all the way in the back to the right. Here we'll have the final fight for the final Hunter's Brand. And then you can craft the full set. The next armor is my favorite looking one, thanks to the yellow crystal look. I love to rock. Pun intended, it in Transmog, which you can of course unlock after upgrading any piece to level 9. The perks though are not that great. The chest namely reduces your damage taken when using a runic or relic, but as you might know, when doing runics or relics, you usually interrupt enemies or they are being hit with some sort of attack. So in my experience, you're not hit often during these actions. If you do though, then you get reduced damage, which yeah, doesn't really matter. And if you also wear the the other two pieces of the Fallen Stars armor set and then get hit during a runic or relic, you get 30% of the cooldown of that specific action back. Again, it doesn't happen often and then you still have to wait quite a long time to be able to use the runic again. And while it's nice that every gear piece has extra runic on it, so your runic stat is quite high, there's not a lot of cooldown. So I'm not really liking it, but totally, if you found a better use for it, let me know in the comments down below. Now to get this Fallen Stars armor set, you need to get crystals in the crater area. So there are smaller ones that just give you a few shards, and there are bigger ones that drop more pieces, and one of them is the crystalline fragment. These can give you the armor set, and other good items after bringing them back to the well. So you can access this by going also to the right immediately from where you start in this crater area. Here you also find a crystal already, so that would be over here on the map. I actually like found this very late, so break it and grab the loot. Now continue, go down and there's only like one way to go and then after a large boss fight in this arena, I won't spoil the boss, you find another crystal. Then by just following this path, there's only one way to go, you will eventually reach the well and there are three big crystals in this area too. So this will give you five items already and it's always in the same order no matter where you found the crystalline fragments. The first item is always the chest and you should now also immediately have the bracers unlocked. 
Now for the waste, we will need a few more of these crystals. You find one over here at the end of the Four Fennaheim side quest, which you already get when entering this crater area. It's a pretty cool side quest as well, but yeah, it speaks for itself. Another one is over here on the map that you have to go to for the Path of Destruction side quest. So you get here by taking the boat and going to the dock that looks like this. Follow this, fall down, and then we'll find the other crystal on your left. And then we will need one more crystal to get the waste. And I found that one over here on the map. It's near the Berserker Gravestone, which you can reach by going to the Mystic Gateway close by. So that's over here. Then get into the boat. They will eventually be able to get there. Now bring all the crystalline fragments back to the well. You will get a ton of items, including the final piece of the Fallen Star set. Subscribe, of course, for way more God of War Ragnarok videos. If you haven't already, a like on the video would really help me out. And check out my previous video on another secret armor set that you can also miss if you're not paying attention. You can watch it by clicking on the screen. Hope to speak to you there. Otherwise, goodbye.